In the heart of contemporary Cairo, in a modest yet elegantly adorned living room, the tension was palpable. Layla, a young, beautiful graduate, sat nervously beside her father, Mahmoud, awaiting the arrival of her suitor's family. The room buzzed with the chatter of relatives, but Layla's thoughts were elsewhere, tangled in a mix of excitement and apprehension. The doorbell rang, slicing through the hum of conversation. Mahmoud stood up, his face brightening. They're here, he announced, moving towards the door. As the guests entered, Layla's eyes met those of her suitor, Amir, a well-dressed, charming young man. Accompanying him were his mother, Suhair, and sister Dahlia. Suhair's gaze was discerning, her smile a little too calculated, sending a shiver down Layla's spine. Welcome, welcome, Mahmoud exclaimed, embracing Amir and then turning to Suhair and Dahlia. Please, make yourselves at home, the living room filled with polite introductions and small talk. Layla exchanged a shy smile with Amir, who seemed genuinely enthralled by her. However, it was Suhair's piercing eyes that kept drawing Layla's attention. As they settled around the coffee table laden with delicacies, Mahmoud initiated the conversation. Amir, we've heard so much about your achievements. Layla is lucky to have caught your eye. Amir responded with humility. It is I who am lucky. Layla's grace and intelligence are what truly captivate me. Layla blushed, feeling a mix of flattery and discomfort. Her gaze met Suhair's, who was studying her with an unsettling intensity. Your home is lovely, Mahmoud, Suhair interjected, her voice laced with a hint of condescension. Layla must have grown up very happy here. Indeed she has, Mahmoud replied, oblivious to the undertone in Suhair's comment. As the conversation progressed, Suhair's control became increasingly evident. She dominated the discussions, often cutting Amir off or speaking on his behalf. Layla noticed this, but remained silent, her unease growing. After some time, Mahmoud brought up the engagement. We are delighted at the prospect of this union. Layla, what do you say? Layla hesitated, her eyes flitting between her father, Amir, and Suhair. I am honored, she managed her voice barely above a whisper. Suhair leaned forward, her eyes locked on Layla. We are thrilled, aren't we, Amir? Layla will make a perfect addition to our family. Amir nodded, though he seemed somewhat restrained under his mother's gaze. As the evening progressed, Layla's discomfort only intensified. Suhair's every word and gesture felt like a subtle assertion of control, overshadowing even Amir's presence. Later in the kitchen, Layla confided in her aunt, Fatima. Auntie, I feel uneasy about Suhair. She seems controlling. Fatima waved her hand dismissively. Oh dear, it's just wedding jitters. All mothers are protective of their sons. It's normal. Layla wasn't convinced, but chose to stay silent. The rest of the evening passed in a blur, with the families agreeing on the engagement and discussing wedding arrangements. Suhair's opinions on every detail were final, and even Mahmoud seemed to defer to her. Late in the night, after the guests had left, Layla lay in her bed, her mind racing. She replayed the evening's events, her unease about Suhair growing stronger. Yet, a part of her wondered if she was overreacting, misinterpreting concern for control. Layla's mother, Samira, entered her room, sitting at the edge of her bed. Layla, you seem distant tonight. Is everything all right? Layla turned to her, the floodgates opening. Mama, I'm scared. Suhair, she's so dominating. I felt like I was being scrutinized rather than welcomed. Samira sighed, her expression softening. My dear, marriage is about compromise and understanding. Maybe Suhair is just protective of Amir. Give it time. Layla nodded, though her doubts lingered. As she drifted to sleep, her mind was a tangle of fear and hope, wondering if she was stepping into a dream or walking into a carefully veiled nightmare. The grand ballroom of the Marriott in Cairo was a spectacle of lights and opulence, filled with the joyous melodies of traditional Arabic music. Layla, draped in a stunning white gown, sat beside Amir, her husband-to-be, amidst a sea of congratulatory faces. The air was rich with the scent of jasmine and roses, yet Layla's heart was heavy, a sense of unease lingering within her. Amir, looking dapper in his black tuxedo, leaned towards Layla, whispering, You look breathtaking, Layla. I am the luckiest man today. Layla forced a smile, her gaze drifting to Suhair, who was orchestrating the event with an iron fist. 
ensuring every detail was to her liking. She whispered back, Thank you, Amir. Everything looks beautiful. As the evening progressed, the guests reveled in the festivities. Mahmoud, beaming with pride, approached the newlyweds. Layla, Amir, everyone is praising this grand wedding. You two are a match made in heaven. Amir responded with a gracious nod. Thank you, Uncle Mahmoud. We owe much of this to my mother's planning. Suhair, overhearing the conversation, joined in, her tone laced with self-satisfaction. Indeed, a wedding like this is a once-in-a-lifetime event. It must be perfect. Layla remained silent, her discomfort growing as she noticed Suhair's dominating presence overshadowing even their special day. As the night wore on, Dahlia, Amir's sister, approached the couple with a mischievous grin. Come on, Layla, let's show them how it's done. Let's dance. Layla, already feeling overwhelmed, hesitated. Dahlia, I'm a bit tired right now. Maybe later? Dahlia's face fell, and she persisted. Oh, come on, just one dance. It's your wedding day. Before Layla could respond, Suhair interjected sharply. Layla, it's just a dance. Don't be a spoil sport. Feeling cornered, Layla stood up reluctantly, her steps heavy. As they reached the dance floor, the crowd cheered, but Layla's heart wasn't in it. She moved mechanically, her smile forced. Sensing her discomfort, Dahlia leaned in. Hey, are you okay? Layla nodded unconvincingly. Yes, just a bit tired, that's all. As the song ended, Layla excused herself, rushing back to her seat, her breath uneven. Amir looked at her with concern. Layla, are you all right? Before she could answer, Suhair approached them, fury evident in her eyes. What was that, Layla? You embarrassed us in front of our guests. Layla tried to explain. I... I just felt a bit overwhelmed. I... Without warning, Suhair raised her hand, striking Layla across the face. The sound echoed through the hall, bringing the music to a jarring halt. The guests gasped in shock, and Layla's hand flew to her cheek, tears welling up in her eyes. Amir, stunned, looked at his mother. Mother? What have you done? Suhair, realizing the gravity of her action, stammered. I... I didn't mean to. It was just... A moment of anger. Mahmoud rushed over, his expression a mix of shock and disbelief. What's going on here? Mahmoud turned to Suhair, anger flaring in his eyes. Suhair, how could you? On her wedding day. Suhair tried to compose herself. Mahmoud, I... I lost my temper. It won't happen again. Mahmoud, though visibly upset, turned to Layla, his voice softening. Layla, my child, sometimes, in the heat of the moment, we do things we regret. Suhair didn't mean it. Layla looked at her father, disbelief and hurt evident in her eyes. How can you say that, Baba? She hit me. On my wedding day. Amir, torn between his mother and wife, remained silent, his gaze fixed on the floor. Samira, Layla's mother, came to her side, her voice soothing yet firm. Mahmoud, this is not acceptable. We need to talk about this. Not here. Not now. The room was heavy with tension. The joyous atmosphere shattered. Layla, feeling betrayed and humiliated, stood up, her voice trembling Layla's new home. A spacious apartment in an affluent Cairo neighborhood was nothing like she had dreamed of. The walls, which should have echoed with laughter and love, instead resonated with the constant demands and criticisms of her new family. One morning, as Layla prepared breakfast, Suhair entered the kitchen, her tone sharp as usual. Layla, why is the breakfast not ready yet? Amir will be late for work. Layla, weary from the lack of sleep, responded softly. I'm almost done, Mama Suhair. It will just be a few more minutes. Suhair huffed. You need to wake up earlier. You're not a student anymore. You're a wife. As Amir entered the kitchen, he noticed the tension. Good morning. What's smelling so good? Suhair quickly changed her tone. Layla's preparing your favorite fool and tamea. Amir smiled at Layla, seemingly oblivious to her distress. Thank you, Layla. You're taking good care of us. Layla forced a smile, her heart aching for some sign of support from him. After breakfast, as Amir left for work, Dahlia, lounging on the sofa, called out to Layla. Layla, once you're done cleaning up, I need you to help me sort out my closet. It's a mess. Layla, already exhausted, nodded silently. Her days were a never-ending cycle of chores, 
with Suhair and Dahlia treating her more like a housemaid than a family member. In the afternoons, when the house was slightly quieter, Layla found solace in the small balcony attached to her room. She often stood there, gazing at the bustling streets below, longing for her former life. It was during one of these afternoons that she made a quiet but firm decision. She started taking birth control pills, secretly procured with the little pocket money she had. The thought of bringing a child into this oppressive environment was unbearable to her. Months turned into years, and Layla's spirit wilted under the constant control and humiliation. Her only moments of relief were her phone calls with her mother, Samira, who often cried, hearing her daughter's plight. One day, Layla received a call that shattered the remnants of her endurance. Her mother, voice trembling, conveyed the news of her father's sudden death. Layla felt the ground slip away beneath her feet. At the funeral, amidst the sea of mourners, Layla stood numb, her eyes dry, but her heart bleeding. Mahmoud had been her pillar, and now that he was gone, she felt utterly lost. After the funeral, as they returned to Amir's home, Suhair's voice sliced through her days. Layla, life must go on. You should focus on your duties. Grieving won't bring your father back. Layla, for the first time, found the strength to respond. He was my father. I need time to grieve. Amir, who had been silent all this while, finally spoke up. Mother, please, let her be. Suhair looked at Amir, surprised by his sudden assertiveness, but didn't argue further. That night, in the solitude of her room, Layla made a decision that would change the course of her life. She called her mother, her voice resolute. Mama, I can't live like this anymore. I want a divorce. Samira, on the other end, replied with a mix of sadness and relief. I've been waiting for you to say that, my child. You deserve happiness, and I'll support you every step of the way. Layla hung up the phone, a sense of determination rising within her. She knew the road ahead would be challenging, but for the first time in years, she felt a flicker of hope. The shackles of her oppressive marriage were about to be broken. In the modest but cozy living room of her mother's home, Layla sat with a determined look in her eyes. Her mother, Samira, sat across from her, a mixture of worry and support etched on her face. Layla, are you sure about this? Divorce is a big step, Samira said, her voice tinged with concern. Layla nodded firmly. Yes, Mama. I can't live under Amir's and his mother's control anymore. I need to be free. Samira reached out, taking Layla's hands in hers. Then I'm with you every step of the way. The next day, Layla found herself in the stark, intimidating corridors of the family court. Her lawyer, a middle-aged, stern-faced woman named Nadia, briefed her on the proceedings. Layla, the judge will ask you about your reasons for seeking a divorce. Be honest, but also be prepared for Amir to dispute your claims, Nadia advised. As they entered the courtroom, Layla's heart pounded in her chest. She saw Amir sitting across the room, his face a mask of indifference. The judge, an older man with a stern demeanor, began the proceedings. Mrs. Layla, please state your reasons for seeking a divorce. Layla stood up, her voice steady despite her nerves. Your Honor, I have been subjected to constant control and emotional abuse by my husband and his family. I seek freedom from this oppressive marriage. Amir stood up to respond, his voice cold. Your Honor, these are baseless accusations. My wife is simply unwilling to adapt to our family's ways. The judge looked at Layla. Do you have any evidence to support your claims? Layla hesitated, then spoke. I don't have physical evidence, but I have been living in a state of constant fear and unhappiness. The judge nodded, making notes. We will review the case and notify you of our decision. The legal battle was tough, with Amir's family trying to discredit Layla at every turn. However, Layla's resolve didn't waver, and eventually the court granted her the divorce. Now free, but also aware of the societal stigma attached to divorced women, Layla faced her future with a mix of trepidation and hope. She applied to various jobs, determined to rebuild her life. After several rejections, Layla finally received a call from a publishing company. Miss Layla, we're impressed with your resume and would like to offer you a position as an editor, the voice on the phone said. Layla's heart soared. Thank you. I won't let you down. In her new job, Layla found a sense of purpose and independence she had never known. She thrived in the work environment, 
her creativity and intelligence finally being put to good use. Meanwhile, Amir remarried, but his new wife, Farida, was a force to be reckoned with. Unlike Layla, Farida dominated the household, often clashing with Suhair and Dahlia. Layla heard about these developments through mutual acquaintances. Sitting in her modest but comfortable apartment, she reflected on the irony. Amir and his family, who had once controlled her life, were now facing their own challenges. As she looked out of her window, a sense of peace filled her. She had fought for her freedom and won. The future was uncertain, but for the first time, Layla felt in control of her own destiny. Her journey had been difficult, but it had led her to a place of strength and self-discovery. Now that our story has concluded, I have a thought-provoking question for you. Do you think Layla's decision to divorce and rebuild her life on her own terms was the best choice, given the societal and familial pressures she faced? Could there have been another way for her to find happiness within her marriage? Share your opinions and thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this story and want to hear more like it, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our MES Middle Eastern Stories channel for more compelling narratives. Your support helps us bring more such stories to you. Thank you for watching and engaging with our content.